This is Tim DeLeo again with using Windows Home Server uh, John Zagel and I have been just kind of hanging out, talking over Skype, and just kind of messing around with the installation of Windows Home Server on the D510 Clear Case. We're doing the complete installation, and currently right now PowerPack One has just finished installing. With the PowerPack One installation DVD, it was easier for us to disconnect the network and just allow the installation to complete. What this does is this allows us to get in and adjust our settings and to put in our information before PowerPack Two and PowerPack Three updates go through. Uh, this usually takes at least two to three hours of multiple restarts. So just to get us up and running, we're doing Power Pack 1 again with the network disconnected. So John, one of the things you had mentioned before was that any data that's left on the drives will be deleted, correct? That's right. That's one of the things uh, it does with the, during the installation. Whatever drives happen to be connected there, it's going to erase all your data. So that's important to know when people who, uh, let's say, do they they, uh, they have already an installation and they're doing a, a server recovery, but the, the full uh, server restore where they clean everything out, they, then they have to be careful if they have any external USB drives that are turned on or something like that, that, uh, you know, you got to watch it when, when you do the install like that. And it's, it'll tell you that, uh, I mean, there's a warning. It says it's going to wipe the drives, all the, all the drives connected. So you have to be careful. Right, and we've been pretty fortunate with this. Uh, we've spent about a little over an hour doing the installation for this. John and I, again, have just been talking over Skype and just kind of BSing as we go through this. But it's taken about an hour from the time of actually plugging the system in until we got to the point of rebooting the OS and getting ready to do the installation. Uh, you can see with the server here that we have, uh, the DVD is just mounted uh, sitting on the top here. Uh, we have two drives underneath. Uh, you can reference one of our previous articles as we went through and did the build and did the installation on this. But it's been a pretty straightforward and pretty simple build. Once we've got PowerPack 1 installed and the connector is ready to go, then we'll just in the background upgrade PowerPack 2 and 3 and get us up to date for the latest and greatest in Windows Home Server software. Again, we have disconnected the network to make sure that we can go through and get the setup without having to worry about Windows automatic updates. So like I said, John and I have just been hanging out, talking about this and making sure that everything is going to upgrade. Uh, we hopefully pull between 35 and 40 watts uh, and with it being a dual core and gigabit network adapter, we should be able to stream HD video without any problems at all. This is where John says interesting or good stuff. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. Yeah, one of the things is when you do the install there, uh, like the first thing uh, that Windows Home Server does is that's it, it formats the drive. Then it creates a 20, uh, 20 gig partition in the case of uh, version one. And... Um, then it, uh, so it'll, it'll copy all the files it needs. Then it'll do a reboot. At that time, it usually, uh, what it'll, do, it'll in, um, put the code, this, the, uh, the serial number, and then do a reboot again. And then at that point, uh, it usually finishes. And it only actually creates the shares folders when you finish uh, running the connector software. So once you do the connector software, that's where it's going to go and it's going to actually because the shares are actually created on the C drive. It's just stuff that you don't know that's going on, but that's it. The, the files are actually on the C drive. When you do the connector, it says, okay, I'm going to format the D partition, which, uh, which is whatever space is left over after the 20 gig on that system drive. It's going to copy the shared folders there, and then that's it. Then it'll set up the, uh, the backup, because when you're going to install the connector, it's going to say joining the network, and then it's going to say uh, configuring backups. So that's it. Then it'll do that backup, uh, whatever it needs to do for the backups, and then you're good to go. So I, that, that's when uh, when all that stuff happens. Right, and right now we're on our fourth reboot. Uh, as John had mentioned, it will go through, and you have to enter in your OEM uh, license key 
and then go through a couple of reboots as it sets up. And you can see probably over the last couple of minutes uh, over this video uh, that you've seen it restart uh, at least three different times. Uh, again, once it sets up and we're ready for Power Pack 1, then we'll be able to get some of our quick and easy information in. Since I'm not doing a headless installation, which means that I'm actually using a keyboard, mouse, and video, uh, I can do most of my inputs directly into the system here. Uh, if you're doing this uh, through any other type of installation, uh, you're going to be using your uh, connection software as your main interface. John and I have been talking a lot lately about how the new systems are working, these new low power Atom type boards work. Um, getting a lot of feedback from Jim and from Chris uh, at Home Server Show. Uh, thank you, Dave, for allowing us to, to interact and to, to be a part of a larger community and help spread the word about these great low power, high performance systems. So thank you again, John. Thanks, Tim. It's always a pleasure. Uh, it's always a pleasure, too, my neighbor to the north. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.